Welcome to the escarpment. This is my HO model railway build channel and I'm your host Jason. Look first up I just want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas and hopefully you're getting some well-earned time with family and friends or maybe just some alone time in the hobby. So in this episode it's all about enhancing or correcting the Walther's 90 foot motorized turntable. And as we get into the step-by-step -step shortly over there on the workbench, I'll take you through and explain why. Now, also in the description in the video below, I'm going to have a list of the parts and where I sourced them from. And then once we're finished with the step-by-step -step set of instructions, I'm going to take you through. I'm going to go over and then hopefully, fingers crossed, that uh, the testing is 100% and everything works as I've got planned. So I'm going to keep this short and sweet. Let's head over to the workbench and I'll take you through step by step. So here on the workbench, we have a bunch of components that I'm going to be tweaking the Walther's 90 foot motorized turntable with. Now the reason behind that is the Walther's solution is a mechanical one, which doesn't suit my needs, meaning all my locos are DCC and sound equipped. And what's happening is as the loco comes onto the, the turntable bridge and it starts rotating, of course it's mechanical. Walther's has this setup where we've got this PCB underneath the bridge here, which then connects to a mechanism here that had eight brass arms and they each attached to parts of this PCB. Now the two outer rings, this represents the rails and you can see here there are gaps. So at some point, on that turntable as it rotates the the tracks lose power and this is basically so the wiring as it crosses over these gaps it changes the polarity mechanically to the rails but for me what that means is i lose sound to my locos so having the sound cut off and not come back on unless i physically put the sound back on is really a solution that's not for me now, given that these kits over here in Australia are somewhere between five, six hundred dollars, really the mechanical solution just wasn't ideal and a little bit disappointed with it, be honest. So in today's video, I'm going to be converting this mechanical solution into a digital solution. And what that means is the trains will come on and off the bridge with sound and it will not be interrupted even when the, the rail polarity is incorrect. Now, to change from a mechanical solution to the digital solution, uh, there's a, a few things I'm going to be doing here. And you can see here, I've already removed the PCB from underneath here, from the wires. So there's not going to be a, a physical disconnect with the rails, you, with that gap I just explained to the actual control board underneath. And basically, there's gonna be a set of wires that go from this straight to the board and then externally the two rails will be controlled by this dual frog juicer here and now obviously it's a dual frog juicer but by removing this particular pin right here it then turns this circuitry from a, a dual frog juicer to a reversing loop circuit and what that will do is it will control the two rails on the bridge anytime they're out of sync with what's coming on or what's going off it will switch the polarity i've already made a start here as you can see this has been removed i've actually and i do apologize there was and i've sort of got ahead of myself there was a unit here with eight brass arms as spoken about earlier and i've already removed that from the board here instead what i'm going to do is use this slip ring. Now all that means is the wires are attached and I've already done testing to make sure continuity between each of the corresponding wires. This unit is fully functional and is good. And you can see there it rotates without twisting up the wires on this end. This side will connect to these wires. I did actually have to go and design this ring here. And what that's going to do is this slip ring will fit inside it. I will glue it. And then this ring will fit up into the center of this mechanism here off the bridge. Now, what that's going to do is just make sure it keeps that centered. So as that rotates, wires aren't going to get tangled. 
Now I've already taken care of the color coding. I just need to make sure because these are these wiring items here that I'm using or will be using in a new solution don't have the exact same wiring here. I've just made sure I think each of these ones have got one of the wires that are just incorrect. So what I've done here is just make sure I get that properly aligned and don't cross my wires because that uh, could be all bad. And basically I'm going to go off and then come back and what I'm going to have is these wires attached to these over here. I've also got heat shrink I'll use over those, each of those wires just to make sure there's, there's no cross torque, no short circuits or anything like that happening. And then I'll come back. So you can see here, I've can now connected each of these wires. I did actually go, have to go to a, a lot smaller heat shrink tube there. Uh, just the fact that these were still too big even for this size wire. Basically all I've done to attach those was I tin each side of the wire and then sort of soldered them together and then placed the heat shrink tube over the top. Now the next steps are basically this will be going over the slip ring, as you can see here. And I'll glue that in place as such. And then from there, I'll have that placed down. And it will be placed just under the lip here uh, and then glued into place. And basically that then takes care of the wiring to the bridge. Now in saying that, before we move further, now for those that want to undertake this task word of advice don't be an idiot like me and install the turntable first and then try to take it apart um, for me it's, it was a pain in the ass now i've got the the plate still within the layout the issue why it made it so tough for me in this sense under it is the infrastructure of my led lighting and i couldn't actually move that so i sort of had to try to get into there was one particular screw uh, that gave me lots of trouble trying to get out. But anyway, so what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to go away. I'm going to get this slip ring on, glue that in place, and then basically feed the wires all back in there, and then glue this component into the center of the bridge here. And then what you'll see is the slip ring component just a little bit on this side with the wires sticking out. And uh, I'll get on to the next part and explain this component here. So I've now glued the slip ring into my custom component and super glued that into this component of the bridge. And what I'm going to do now is just quickly test the continuity of the tracks and at least the two track wires just to give me some confidence. Now I've done previous testing and everything is good but just to sort of show you here so now you can see i've got my multimeter on uh, i've got it in the continuity it's an open circuit at the moment so i believe the black wire is this track here and you can see a short circuit there and if i touch the other track it's still an open circuit because that's not connected to the other side but the red wire here and i've kept the black and red as Walthers have done also as my rails. Then if I do it on the track I just tested, it should still be an open, which it is. And then if I test the other track, I've got the short circuit there, meaning power is directly connected. In doing this digital solution, you are going to have direct wiring. You're not going to have that mechanical PCB on this side with the the arms on this side. It's gonna be directly wiring these components straight to the circuit board here. So in saying that, with the existing setup of the Walther's kit, you could take the bridge on and off uh, because that PVC just rested on those arms where here I've got direct wiring. So I needed to make sure if I needed to take the bridge off and service it or service something else, I needed a way to disconnect. And basically what I've done is used a connection here. And this will be part of the wiring. So this side will be directly wired to the PCB here, and then will be attached to the corresponding wiring. And I've got the di diagram here 
telling me which one's which because obviously when I went from this to what was on the bridge, I think the difference was this brown wire, which is blue on that side. And now I'm back to blue here, but I've got a green wire. So the blue will be attached back to the brown to correspond with the blue and then the green I'm just going to be using it to attach to the orange, which is orange on that side. But just make sure you have a diagram with your wiring, the color codes, that type of thing, uh, just to make sure no accidents happen. Because uh, I really don't know with crossing any of these wires whether it would blow something. So uh, just be very, very cautious and double check things before you start hooking up. And at least before you apply any power and that type of thing. So right now what I'm going to do is take this component here, solder it to the PCB. So before I move on, one of the other uh, quality checks I guess I did because I was needed to solder these wires and some really fine prongs on this connection here, I did come back and take my multimeter to do the continuity checks just to make sure each wire was connected to the right wire and there was no cross talk. Uh, or short circuits between any of the wiring uh, to sort of help me. Same sort of principle I applied here with the soldering, tinned each side, put the solder on, did a small uh, heat shrink tube around each and then I put a larger one just to make sure it is held really tight in place, especially when pulling it apart. I don't want to, you know, pull any of the wires away and then it doesn't work. Now quickly before I do move on to the next step, I just needed to explain because it had me confused for a little bit, but from the bridge here, there's actually five wires and they were connecting to a set of eight arms on this side as previously mentioned. There was uh, you know, eight brass arms here that sat on the PB, PCB. And I couldn't work out what was going on, but I noticed that if you can see here, we've got the, the eight solder points here and the two in the middle have actually been soldered together because what was happening was there was an arm for this part, that part, and then there was two arms you can see here, and these sort of represent each of the rings on the PCB that I pulled off the bridge. And you can see here, you know, the yellow, there was a connection to, if the pins were one to eight, there was a connection on two and seven, and then obviously with three and six, and then the middle two were connected together. So I had to come back and on the other side, I just made some jumpers. So obviously with the middle two, I soldered together. And then the next, Ones on the outside, I took a blue wire and just soldered them together. And same as these inner two. And the only two that are not soldered together, obviously, because they represent the red and black of the track of the uh, rails that need to switch polarity. So as mentioned, I've gone ahead and wired up this side of the connection using my, making sure my color coding was correct. Uh, the black stuff you can see here, it's a bit like electrical tape, but in a liquid form. I normally put that on when I'm working around circuit boards or anything I've put on, just to make sure it's all isolated and there's nothing touching each other. Um, other than that, next step is I'll go ahead and connect this side to the bridge, and then basically it will be ready to put together. Now, I'll get, once I do solder the other side of the connection on, double check all the wiring just to make sure that's all in sync. And then basically I'll go ahead and at least put the components of the Walther's turntable back together. And then underneath I need to do a little bit of wiring just to connect the, basically the dual frog juicer here, but turn it into a reverser and get that connected underneath and it should all then be ready for testing. Just a note, I did have to come back and remove the extra extension of wires that I had down here and I've now 
connect, taken the plug and connected it directly to these wires, just due to the fact that tucking it inside, there's not a lot of room uh, in the bottom half uh, once it gets screwed into the, the bottom of the plate. So I've just shortened, taken a lot of those wires out. So hopefully that should be all good now. Okay, so we're over here, everything's put together and it's ready to be tested. So basically at the end of the day, what I'm going to be showing here is a number, a number of maneuvers that shows that the, the power to the track isn't cut off and that the, the auto reverser is actually working, demonstrating that I've converted it from a mechanical solution to a full digital solution. On this particular model, there's four pins underneath, two are for the direct power requirements, which I run independent power source, and then the other two are for the tracks. The, the two DCC outputs from the dual frog go into those, and then on the other side, the, the inputs to the frog juicer come from my power bus that's powering all these tracks. One of the major issues that I did face when I first put this together and started to test was everything seemed to work except for locating the home position. What that means is the sensor on the bridge and the sensor within the, the pit weren't talking to each other. Now I spent a number of hours on it. It did get a little bit frustrating. I did end up changing one of the LEDs to the emitter. So what I did was I, I just quit for the day because I was getting a little frustrated and decided I'll go online, do some research and come back the next day all fresh. Now, the interesting thing, not that I found any solution online, there's not a lot out there, but I did come across a forum where someone spoke about their 130 foot Walther's turntable that they had. He too couldn't find the home position, but it ended up being an alignment issue between the two sensors. You see, each of those sensors are only peering through like a pinhole, you know, a bit of dust in the pit that's interfering could whack it out of, you know, alignment. I, I did the full vacuuming. I went in and cleaned my rollers that roll on the, the pit itself. Did all that stuff. I reinstalled the old LED back in and did some further testing. And I finally found uh, where it was aligning and home position was being found. So yeah, it was an alignment. It had nothing to do with my wiring, nothing to do with the conversion. Because at first I thought, oh shit, you know this isn't going to work. But you know, when I went through it logically, look for the simplest solution and that alignment, because uh, we're dealing with pinholes here, it's basically the first thing to look at. Anyway, I'm going to turn the loco on and get this testing underway. Now, first up, what I'm gonna do is just bring the loco on the bridge and then I'm gonna do a complete 360 just to show you that the track power no longer cuts out. Oh, you get it in the right direction would help. I'm just going to bring it on the plate. Now, I haven't cleaned any tracks. I'm hoping <laughs> everything works. It doesn't cut out. Now, this 4831... I need to have a look at the circuit board on it and take off the capacitors and chokes because it really does hesitate when it's in low speed. Anyway, that's another job for another day. What I'm going to do now is just have the turntable do a loop and just to show that the power doesn't cut off. It normally would cut off across this section here. So you can sort of see nothing been interfered with there constant power to the track. Let's keep it going so it goes all the way around a 360. Sometimes it'll just stop at the next available track. Anyway, you can see there it's done a full 360 and the sound has stayed intact. It's got no keep alive in it, nothing like that. 
everything works perfectly. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the train off the bridge, then I'm going to set the, the head of the bridge to that position, bring the train back on just to show you with the auto reversers working. Because if I switch the bridge around to the other end, it should be different polarities to the track on the layout. stop it there now what I'm going to do is take the bridge and bring the head around to track four I've got my tracks numbered one two three four all the way over here to seven so let me do track four and let's change it so the head comes around And then what I'm going to do once that lines up, I'm going to bring the train back onto the bridge. And keep in mind, because I've turned it around, the polarity of the rails should be different to what's on the layout. And hence, my auto reverser should take care of it. And then you can see there, not a problem whatsoever. So the auto reverse is doing its job. And what I might do is bring the tail around and take it off. And then I think that will do for the testing. I've tested that basically the power no longer cuts out and the auto reverse is doing its job. The auto reverse is only connected to the rails on the bridge. That's all you need. So I'm going to go to track five with the tail. And that should bring this end over to here. Now I haven't gone through and shown you how to program this stuff. There's plenty of stuff on YouTube about that. This really was about enhancing and changing the solution from a mechanical viewpoint to a, a full digital one and hence not to lose track power and interfere with your sound logos i'm just going to take this off and then i think we'll head back to the seat Been a bit of a journey but we got there in the end i guess the biggest issue that i came across was that sensor alignment now as mentioned during the testing those sensors i mean they sort of the two leds one from the bridge and one on the the actual pit itself i guess sense each other through a pinhole so it's very very easy to get those misaligned and so sometimes it doesn't hurt to first while you're getting frustrated step away cool off go do some research come back with a fresh mind and thoughts so some of the tips as mentioned in the step by step is you know please do yourself a, a color code chart stick to your wiring make sure you're wiring the right thing to the right wire because obviously you may get parts that have different colors in their wiring they're not always going to be exactly the colors that you'll find in that walther's kit also probably best to do this prior to installing on your layout especially if you install it and you can't get to a point where you can take it all out easily i would advise to put a connection in um, just so you can then take that bridge off and service it as it needs to every now and then but at the same time you need that connection to be small enough to be able to be fit between the circuit board and the top of the pit one of the things I actually end up doing, and I didn't show it in this video, but that bottom blue compartment where it held that circuit board, where it had, a, I guess it had a part in there that held uh, the arms, the eight arms I spoke about. I ended up snipping, cutting that knob out uh, just to give me some more room for the wires and the connection to tuck under between the pit and the circuit board. 
Anyway, this will be the last video of 2022. So I wish everyone the best in the new year. Hopefully you'll have a good New Year's and hopefully 2023 will be a great year for you. So until next time, stay safe, be kind to each other. Bye for now.